Let's make six dice next week. Nice. Nice dice. How are you going to do that? You're going to be in Disneyland. Uh, I have to make them all today and tomorrow and then get it in the mail. Well, all but two of them because the last ones are um, Disneyland, all that jazz. Uh, recording, recording. Clap. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mind Your Own Small Business, the show that is better than coffee break, cheaper than therapy. I am Brian. I'm Pepperoni. And I'm Tomas. Tomas. On Cinco de Mayo. Oh. Am I good enough? Is this good? I can maintain this posture. You, you, can, you can move around. In no, fact, I, can't. I would encourage you to you like when you're not talking to like you could boo your head away and then and but oh so you want talking to be at a, okay. a t- talking how does certain... this sound how does this level sound right here it sounds great it sounds okay great. we're obviously recording this on Cinco de Mayo Cinco though... de Seis have you seen that uh, uh, what was that show Arrested Development episode oh, where they yes. wanted to create their own holiday man no. so they created Cinco de Seis that was such a good TV show gosh it was so funny. Don't mind me. I'm just playing some Clash Royale. Yeah, you do that from time to time. It's a Friday. It is a Friday. I mean, it's not a Friday when you're getting this. You're getting this Friday, on a Wednesday. Friday, so Friday. Be, it's what we need some Rebecca Black. Uh-huh. To Everybody well, she probably doesn't care if we pirate her stuff, weekend. right? Probably not. Why, why would she? I mean, it's just publicity and all that jazz. But moanies. <laughs> why is sick <laughs> on the way? So I found out my always. father listens to this podcast when he exercises. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Get him jazzed up. He sent me an interesting note about IP. Um, he sent me some info, info on Apple intellectual property that I'd like to share. All right. We're talking to clarify edible apples, not Apple the company. Correct? Well, yes. My father's a... An orchardist, so there you go. That would be weird if he sent me stuff on Apple. I was, yeah, just, but I was just telling the people you, out there. You, I, I legitimately thought you were talking about Apple, the company, because you love Apple so much. But I don't know why your dad would know about Apple. But that's kind of what I'm getting at, because we've mentioned it before, and that my family lives on an orchard, and uh-huh. so I, uh, yes, I agree. But share yeah. it with us. What, what's, the what's the Apple most... IP? And then well, we'll go into the I got, I got to I got to win. win. He's got to win. Um, but I will tell you guys, if if you ever like think you don't like apples, what you need is you need to go get an apple from like off the tree apple orchard set up because but they're fantastic. It is. Um, It'll ruin you. I bought the apples <laughs> from campus because they have those every Ugh. fall, and those apples are are garbage. Well, I don't think they they don't treat them with the same level of love and chemicals as. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, my family does both traditional and organic. Um, fun fact about uh, organic farms: they still use organic pesticides. It just uh, is. People think that organic is non-chemical, and that's not the case. Organic still uses organic pesticides, and they will still kill you. Um, mm-hmm. So, but they'll them. kill you organically. Uh, yeah, it's the same as uh, <laughs> eating poison oak, cocaine, <laughs> uh, <laughs> other you know natural things. Um, you know, gravity. Uh, cocaine's <laughs> like uh, yeah, <laughs> gravity's gravity. natural. Natural. He died of natural causes. What was that? He, he fell out of a window. He jumped out of a building. I was like, no, it was natural causes. Gravity. <laughs> All right, this is what my father said. Um. <laughs> He said, just listen to the IP podcast. And he said, did you know that ambrosia, it's a type of apple, was a patented apple and McDougal is a fruit shed, Mm -hmm. um, bought the rights to sell the apple in the United States. So they controlled it in the United States until the patent ran out. Before the patent ran out, they trademarked the name ambrosia gold. And that's how they distinguish their ambrosia apples from other ambrosia apples. Sugar Bee is a trademark name. Sugar Bee is now also a type of apple. Mm-hmm. Very good apple. The I also like ambrosias. The variety is called CN121, and that patent runs out in 2032. But the trademark goes on. But the trademark goes on. So another company in 2033 could grow Sugar Bee, but they couldn't sell it as Sugar Bee. 
So most new varieties will be patented under some names such as WA38 or WA38 and then trademark the name Cosmic Crisp. That's that's so that reminds me once it's again fascinating. Off, it is fascinating. off topic. Uh Disney is getting out of uh what is it? Florida. No, not Florida. Oh. They um, are, aren't they? They want to. But. Their stuff's all going into intellectual, or sorry, into royalty free. Public uh, domain. Public domain. Oh, um, interesting. And so because of that, they're getting out of uh, patent or copyright or whatever it is, and they're moving into trademark because trademark exists until you don't renew it. Yeah. And so now they're trademarking the Disney uh, or Mickey Mouse instead of copywriting him. Now, that means you can trademark the name Mickey Mouse, but you can't. You can also do the image Mickey Mouse. You can trademark an As image? a logo. A brand name As or a an logo. Image. Okay. And so in order to avoid brand confusion, we don't want I, our logo. I know it's just because I cartoon. just looked at USPTO, and there's three options. There's name, there's logo, and then there's logo and name. So I'm going to share something here as we're getting into this, and this wasn't what we are planning on going, uh-huh. but... So my time is valuable. I, <laughs> I have a problem actually with this. Okay, where do I start? Originally, the idea behind patents and trademarks and that whole deal was to give the initial inventor a certain period of time. It was never intended to be this lockdown. long lockdown. In fact. It was the exact opposite because when things fall into public domain, innovation happens at a faster rate. Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. because you're racing to get it. Because everybody can use it. Now, all of a sudden, if you had, like, let's say you had a patent that was over 15 years and that, that one company has it, but now all of a sudden the patent runs out and everyone, else, everyone can look at that patent and start to innovate on it. Okay, imagine how many Star Wars universes you could just create and how, like, what you could do and expand in the Star Wars universe if Star Wars were to basically fall out of that and it were to go out to the public domain. The reason that things like, you know, Beethoven's music and Mozart's music is in all the Looney Tunes, it's because it all became... Public uh, domain. Public Mm -hmm. domain, royalty free. (laughs) And so then all of a sudden... Music that most people didn't ever listen to, kids now knew at the time, Looney Tunes, they knew the music because it became readily available to people in a new generation. So I would argue that people in like you know music from the 40s and 50s, as it falls into public domain, becomes much easier for people to get to know that music at a later time because it's you know, basically becomes a library, the library of humanity mm-hmm. that anyone can go in and build off of. Mm-hmm. So, so going off of building a uh, world like Star Wars worlds, that's what was the problem with, that was going on with D and D is Dungeons and Dragons was what they called the open gaming license. So anyone could take the world and then modify it. The system was free. And then all of a sudden they wanted to remove that and so all these people had built ecosystems around the D&D platform, and uh, D&D tried to change that. And, and the community, like in a single voice, was like, nah, we're good. Like, you don't, you don't need to do that. And so they, they actually stopped them from doing that. And since then, they have have moved into Creative Commons. So now D&D 5th edition will always be accessed to anyone to use because it's now, it's now free. But... Um, that was a fun little tangent. Now let's talk about what's really real, according to the schedule. Or what we were talking about. Talking about. Why do we need to stick to a schedule? Because my time's valuable. Yeah. How much is your time worth? Oh, I am so ready for this one. I, I would. <laughs> okay. Start us off then. Or, or do you have to finish your game? Uh, no, I don't have to. I don't have to. I choose to. My time's <laughs> valuable, Brian. Gosh. <laughs> uh, see what I'm working with here, folks? Man. No, I think this... I'm going to go out on a limb here. Um, I have no facts to back this up. So this uh, is... Facts don't care about your feelings. <laughs> um, I would argue... I so. 
I'm high, remember? <laughs> <laughs> on life. High um, on life. No, uh, it's go, go team, go. prescribed drug, so I am fine. <laughs> okay. Um, this is now a Joe Rogan podcast, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we pick up some followers from the mention of his name. Thanks, Joe. Um, okay. First thing, I think the idea of to- uh, what your time is worth is uh, stems from the 9 to 5 mentality, right? Because it's usually you start out as an hourly worker, and you're getting paid an hourly wage, and therefore your time is worth X because that's what you're mm-hmm. being paid. So when we as entrepreneurs try to um, pivot, uh, or once we do make a pivot into the entrepreneurial life, and then it comes up that we are making a product with our own two hands, and we sell that product for uh, $20, but it takes us, let's say it takes us three hours worth of work. Our time then gets put into this equation of, well, what's your time worth? If your time is worth even, say, $5 an hour Mm -hmm. after your fees and stuff, you've mainly, you've uh, maybe only made a couple of bucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think as entrepreneurs, the worth of your time is totally dependent on what you're doing. And I think that that scale fluctuates. Oh, I, 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 I agree. And so it's actually really funny. I was talking to Brian McKellar yesterday because I'm, I'm launching a new product. So it's, it's a laser cut uh, wall art. And I told him what I wanted to charge for it. And he's like, that's, that's way too cheap. Like you need to be getting your hour, hourly rate up to like $300 an hour. And, um, I'm, I'm happy with like a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars an hour, but 300 would be awesome. The, th- the thing I think people fail to realize is just because you want something to be worth that... Doesn't mean it will be. It's only worth what people will pay. That's true. And, and the reason that artists get a lot of money for their work is not because they've come out and said, this is what it's worth. That's what people have paid. That's true, because a and lot so, of people want it, and so they fight over it. So then is that is it a chicken and egg thing? Do the people say, this is what I'm worth, and they charge it, and therefore somebody buys it, and so then that's what it's worth? Or does somebody say, well, I'm only going to pay $300 for that, and so then the person says, cool. My time is now worth, it took me 10 hours to paint that. My time is now worth 30 bucks an hour. Interesting. I don't know. Okay, so let's let's take this dice. So R&D took me th- three months okay roughly to because I, I had to teach myself how to 3d model and then get the weight down and and hang figure on out. hang on sorry you said three months isolate that down just i'm gonna i'm gonna be picky on this one uh, so you saying three that was three months 10 hours a day for seven days a week over the course of three months no how many no. man hours how, how many, many man, man hours, hours did it take for you to learn how to do that what was your school time how many credit hours? <laughs> Dude, this is hard because... Well, that's, so, how, that's how you have to factor it in. So let's say I, I, I spent roughly, let's round it up to 12 hours in modeling um, and then printing, let's say, five hours with failures and then um, painting and finishing. Oh, that's We'll do another 12. So we're looking at... A 40 hours. Uh, roughly 40 hours so only over, over three months so it only took you one work week what yeah if, if i did nothing but that it would have only taken me one work week but i That's i was good. was doing a lot of other things at that time um and so that that's all the time that i could really put towards it and <laughs> i would i would go down to my office at like six at night and then i would work on it until like one or two trying to figure it out and th- those are those are conservative like it, it could be up to twice that amount of time on it and then even if if you count what i've i've done in in changing the process as i've because the way i made the dice originally versus the way i make the dice now is 
It's a little different. It's a little different. Like it's similar, but like it it has evolved a that lot. That dang supplier you got. He gave mm-hmm. you one helmet, gave you the goods, and then he gave you another. I said, yeah, and then I had to change actually, it. Actually, you got to figure that out. But to be fair, it was Peach a lot easier to fi- figure it out the second time than it was the first time. True. So here's an interesting factor. You at the beginning said, "Well, I'd be happy if my time was worth one hundred and fifty dollars an hour." Uh huh. Okay. Um, that means that your R and D on that costs you six grand. That's yeah. what your that's what your your personal what you just said out here is that your R and D of forty hours to figure that out at one hundred and fifty dollars an hour if that's what you want your worth to be it just costs you six thousand dollars. Can you write that off in taxes? No, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to pay someone six grand in order to write it off. See, and then. Then, along with that, if it was $300 an hour, like our colleague was saying, that that's uh-huh. what your time should be worth. That's twelve grand. $12,000 is what that costs you. That's so insane. So I would argue that essentially what – so uh, uh, I'm – okay. I'm going to jump in and talk – because one of the things you said is that, you know, the whole it depends thing, okay? So I have stuff that I have to do for work that honestly – is a higher you would it, you would call it a higher worth an hour items that I do okay the For, professionals in that area charge correct yeah okay so you know I've got sales tax that have to be finished I've got so if I were to move that over to a bookkeeper what would they what, what would I be paying them and that's what it's worth versus I've got boxes that have to move around a warehouse versus that so technically my time moving boxes is just if you look at market value. I'm not saying like what you're saying you want yourself to be mm-hmm. worth, et cetera. And I would say that you're in the R&D because of you're looking at design. Design mm-hmm. arguably is one of the most expensive things to, to do um, aside from things like legal and maybe accounting. So I'm not saying that you should never go move boxes. Because yeah. sometimes I have to go downstairs and I have to move boxes. Um, I have the campground we're getting ready. Mm-hmm. And I am building two twin beds right to to add to one of our cabins out there and and those you know the twin beds are costing me nothing in materials i have all the materials but they are taking me quite a bit of time now you could say well shoot just go out there and buy an 80 dollar uh you know bed frame and call it good but i'm a enjoying the time that i'm doing which okay. i feel like doesn't isn't the dollar amount is low but the fulfillment is high um two i'm building exactly how i want it which mm-hmm. is better than going out and getting an $80 piece of, of furniture. And three, I am learning things that I otherwise would not be able to learn. And that to me is invaluable because I'm now learning, I'm fitting together you know, joints on this, on this piece of furniture. I'm, I'm doing these things. I'm waking up first thing in the morning. I'm getting myself up out of bed. I'm doing physical activity. Those are worth more to me than saying, well, if I'm worth a, I'm, I'm worth $150 an hour, $300 an hour, therefore, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that to the peasants so mm-hmm. that I can work on something I hate doing, even though that's technically putting more money in my pocket to do something I hate doing at the $150 an hour amount versus doing something I love doing. That, that brings up a very interesting question. How much are you willing to give up for doing work you like versus work you don't? Ooh. Mucho. So, Hang on. I'm bad at that. Say that. So explain. I, uh, so f- ask it again to make sure I understand. You're, okay, no. You say it and then I'll... So l- l- let's say that you have work that you know that you could make hundred, two hundred dollars an hour. Yeah, okay. And then you have work that you're going to make considerably less. Let's yeah, say okay. like ten less dollars an hour. Yeah. But you really, really like it. Yes. How much would you be willing to give up of your more expensive right. time for for the the less expensive? Okay, well, I understood it correctly. Just uh-huh. make sure that that's the case. Um, one, I have two products that I sell. One is a much higher uh, valued item um, and does great. Mm-hmm. Another one is boring, but also is like tried and true. So the one that's tried and true are my safety seals. They're these little extension cord covers. And then my other one is these helmets, these magnetic 
<laughs> electromagnetic field floating helmets. Much like <laughs> how yeah. that's suspended. It's it's like someone ripped the guts out of one of them and put them inside of a dice. Almost. It's it's the jock version of the nerd version. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, because the allure, because the helmets are cool to me, they represent a, a genre of, of sports that I like, and they are high selling items. I would much rather prioritize those and work on those than the safety seals that are tried and true, but they are Boring AF. And I should, I should be labeling them for FBA and putting some into Amazon, fulfilled by Amazon, on a monthly basis. And I simply am not because they are boring. And I dislike them. That's interesting. I am (laughs) stepping over dollars to pick up dimes. Because I think that the, if... If I sold as many helmets as I did safety seals, then I would I, I would be You'd be living the high life. It would be awesome, but I'm not, but I still think that I could, and so I'm still working on them because they are a sexier product than my non-sexy one. So, yes, I chasing I, after sexy. When I do yeah, coaching, you do. I talk about that a lot and Maybe I'm maybe it's hypocritical for me to bring that up because I spend a lot of my time at my campground. Is my campground going to make me a millionaire? I don't think it will. But I will tell you I have a lot of fun going out, working outside, caretaking, uh, you know, taking care of of trees and and planting new trees and all these pieces. But um I have to make those decisions that I said, okay, I have to compartmentalize that version. Because almost it's like that's a hobby that mm-hmm. pays a little bit versus my job that pays more. This this makes me wonder, because we talked about the, the mental disorders tied with, with entrepreneurs <laughs> yeah. did. a little while ago. I, I have to wonder if this concept might lead to that, where where you're like – the the stress of I want to do something fun, but it's costing me money, like because that that that's another thing. Vacations as an entrepreneur are are a completely different beast. They're not vacations; they're postponements. Yeah, yeah, because you either have to do a crap ton of work before you go, or you have to do a crap ton of work when you get back, or you do both. Or you work while you're on vacation. Or you work on vacation. Yeah. So so you're you're. There's always stress tied to that time off because you're, 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 and then arguably, depending on who you are, that could be just in the back of your mind, making so you can never fully enjoy or be present. Ooh. I just thought of a challenge that we should do, uh, the three of us. We should pick. So I've already, I've already come out and said that my safety seals are the thing that I should probably devote more of my time to because they are the constant tried and trues. What if we did this contest where the three of us chose the one unsexy thing that is better for our businesses and we focused on that for, I don't know, a period of time and then we came back and said like... like did it, did it make a difference? Yeah, are we... Is what we're saying like this thing of like, oh, we don't want to do this because our things are – what if we actually focused on those things? What if we actually focused on those non-sexy things? Would we be more successful than we are? Like what what if you just – Is this our sober October? (laughs) Kind of. That was another one. (laughs) But I realize my dad watches this now, so no. (laughs) I edited it for you, Pa. You're like, love you, Dad. <laughs> well, when we talk about, uh, so in our sandal lines, our shower sandals. Yeah. That's, you know, case in point. I want to develop all these other kinds of, of footwear when the shower sandals have always been that, it, it had been our cash cow, and it still is for, for a long, you know, for long periods of time. And it's not a product that we're saying, wow, cool, how innovative. No, it's an Economical product you put on your feet to stop the athlete's foot from creeping up from the goos of the gym showers and getting on your toesies. 
Mm-hmm. So, and that's what people need. And we've specialized in, in that uh, for a long time. So I, I would say that's an interesting, it's a cool challenge. Um, I don't see why we would shouldn't do it. Or really, I guess really maybe looking at it, not necessarily saying what are the most boring items that we should spend our time on, but as... As an entrepreneur, we have the ability to manage our own schedules. Yes. And that can be awesome, but it is also, it's a lot more difficult because when you get into work, there is a person that is telling you, you will be in trouble unless you get here at this time. And you cannot stay longer than this time. And oh yeah, that's, 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 it's cut and dry, right? Whereas as an entrepreneur, I could literally get up, walk out of this building right now from your podcast, go do anything that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And there is no boss who's going to get after me. If something something fails because I'm choosing to do that, it's no one's fault but my own. Mm -hmm. And I think that really that, you know, what is my time worth should really be, what should I be hyper-focusing my time on so that my time is worth more? And not, oh, well, I want my time to be worth 150. It's like, okay, what, what do I need to focus my time on to be worth $300 an hour? Interesting. So, okay, go, going off of that concept, though, do you make your time more valuable by finding things or products that people will buy so that it becomes more valuable? So, so going back to your chicken or, or, or the egg, yeah. like, do you find the things to work on to make your pro, uh, your time worth three hundred dollars an hour, or do you say your time's worth three hundred dollars an hour, and then uh, this is essentially the same thing? Find the products that that do that. Like, do you build it or do you set it? I think setting it allows the goal to happen because that's yeah. like saying that's like saying I want to be able to do a four minute mile, mm-hmm. and you say, well, do you start running a six minute mile or do you? Focus on just say, well, you have to start. That's a terrible example. I have no idea. I don't run a four minute mile. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you, you set that goal because uh-huh. if you're okay with. So you, you, you say that you pick what you want your time to be with and you build yourself up to that. And be okay telling people that you're not, like telling people no if they're not willing to pay that. Now, uh-huh. I know lots of people who think they're worth a lot more than they are. And then they they will turn down things and say, oh, well, that's not worth – we were talking about it the other day with insurance, right? Yeah. That uh, the, a friend of ours who sells insurance, um, who may or may not have previously been named, talks about how you know people are like, well, uh, uh, they'll nickel and dime on a $35 a month insurance premium policy. And he's like, I'm not going to bend over backwards for that. Yes, it's money, but – versus you get a couple of these clients that are $700 a month premium – individuals or people who own businesses so that you're working a bunch of different premiums with this one deal. Exactly. Then... Or I meet trying to sell downstairs. If I have someone walk in, say they want to buy a pair of sandals and I sell them a pair of $30 sandals, but it takes me an hour and 15 minutes of one-on-one time with that individual versus if I sit down with a client that in yeah, that like... same hour, we, we do a $220 sale or a $300 sale. Then now I, I, that's I should be focusing on those products versus the other ones. Go ahead, Anthony. You've got something to say. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if um, is it really worth that if there's not something else that you could be doing? I guess um, let me clarify that. So the example of like this client that is, it's a thirty-five dollar sale. Mm-hmm. Are you passing up the opportunity for a hundred dollar sale to do that thirty-five dollar sale? And if you are, then yeah, it's a waste. But if you're not, then is it really a waste? Yeah, because let's say she would have made nothing in that hour. Exactly. Would you rather have zero or 35? I'd rather have 35. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so weird. And I, I think as entrepreneurs, I think that is really the thing. Because there's another product that I sell in the fall. Uh-huh. And to do this, uh, I have to travel. Um, I have to travel about uh, 11 hours, nine if I'm not doing the speed limit. Um, <laughs> uh, but, All the way but, from Helena. Yeah. <laughs> I have to drive there, obtain the product, and then I drive back. And the question is always like, well, what's your time worth in that? It's like, well, during this amount of time, I'm not 
I'm not giving up money to do this pro- to do this. So right now the time is worth nothing because mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not losing anything. Uh-huh. So I wonder if that's also the mindset of like uh, maybe it's a poor one. I mean maybe it's um, I wonder if successful entrepreneurs like Mark Cuban comes to mind. Does he ever thought that way of that at the beginning of your stage, you get whatever opportunities you can because you're not making anything in those times or like what you were saying, you build the thing so that your time is worth $300. Well, because the reason I asked that is because right now, so we, we have a product that sells really well uh, at the beginning of the year. So from the beginning of the year to April, we're really busy. And then during the end of the year, uh, like Christmas season, we're selling lots of different things because everyone's looking for presents. Gifts, yeah. Uh, but we don't have like a bread and butter product right now for the middle of the year. And so it's it's hard for me because you're like work on something that I could that is not sexy that I could sell and I I don't have that yet. Garden tool organizers. I that's what I was thinking. I was thinking of moving to functional items. So, so we do all artsy stuff like wall art and and home decor and and things like that, but I one thing that the 3D printing community s- talks about a lot is that if you move to functional, functional prints, you can charge a lot more money and there's a lot more demand because... You're filling a need. Yes. Yeah. An, an immediate need, right? Most of the time when somebody's looking for something functional, it's not like, hey, I might need this in three months. It's, I need this thing now and I'm willing to pay the pain of the butt fee for it because I need it now. Interesting. That literally happened yesterday. Oh. That happened yesterday. I So I'm a school bus. Um, I learned that the charger I had on it was not strong enough for oh. that size battery because a school bus mm-hmm. battery is very big. Surprise, yes. surprise. Diesel. So I a very large diesel that moves a 15,000 pound tube, 45, 40 foot tube. And this, so that this bus, and this is not a school bus, like I don't drive school bus. This is a school bus I purchased on accident. And... <laughs> Uh, won it in a bid that I didn't think what they'd actually take, but it's a, it's a party bus now. We use it at the campground. Um, we have all these other things. Well, I needed to get it moved out to the campground, and I needed to buy something that was going to um, uh, charge the battery. And so it didn't matter the price because at that point it was I needed it and I needed it now, and it was a, it, that was standing in the way of something that next week someone is renting the bus and the campground for several hundred dollars to use it for a couple of hours. So spending $40 on a new charger just made sense versus, you know, I've wanted certain wall arts inside of this building forever. And I've not, I'm not doing it because mm-hmm. the, the functionality isn't there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we were actually just yesterday, I had a live meeting with some of my students that I teach at this university that I, I do online. And we were talking, someone asked that, they said, well, how do you know what people want? And I said, well, you have to find that need. When you, you, you can use keywords, you can, you know, you find a pain point. And it's like this, if you can get a framer, if you're trying to build a house and you can find a framer that'll work and do a job for $15 an hour, but your plumber is going to charge you $300 an hour. If you're trying to figure out which industry to get into, go be a plumber. Mm-hmm. Because it, the obviously the worth that's sitting there, the, the, the need for plumbers is so much higher. So um, I, yeah, if you can find those things that are the needs, which we talk about your boring product. That's a need. It's a need. Mm-hmm. It's a, I'm working outside. I got to put up my, um, my it, Christmas lights. It's, n- it's not uncommon for somebody to buy 30 of them in one order. And if I don't have 30 of them in stock, then I, I lose out on those sales. And I have seen that I, it's not uncommon for me to have one or two sales a month of 30 plus items. And right now of the ones that sell 30, I'm, I'm out of stock in and I haven't restocked them. And it's possible that the people that are looking for that can't fight for it for whatever reason you would need 60 safety seals for but they're not it's not there they own a campground i don't know i was gonna yeah i was gonna say i i, I mean or flooding in california or you know like 
Um, They're running cores from generators because of a forest fire. And so. the way my Fulfilled by Merchant uh, setup works, they're not... Uh, it's uh, it's like a dollar ninety nine in shipping plus one dollar for each additional item. Mm-hmm. So they'd pay you know sixty three dollars for sixty safety seals, and then it's like well, I'd rather get sixty when Amazon Prime. I'll go find somebody else. Somebody else, and I'm I'm probably the most economical option on Amazon, and so that person's gonna go buy sixty somewhere else at a at a higher dollar amount. But because it's not an Amazon, I've lost out on that sale. I, that's crazy to me. Is is which now all I want to do is go go label safety seals. <laughs> so <laughs> take the challenge by the horns and say yeah. absolutely. I'm done with this podcast. I'm wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> My time's too valuable for this. No, I, dude. That's that's so that's so interesting to me because like also thinking about as a consumer, what is your time worth? Because you have that the Amazon Prime versus uh, fulfilled by merchant. Also take on on Etsy, yeah, free shipping mm-hmm. versus charge shipping, because when I was starting off, there were a couple products that I couldn't move. So what I did is I ch- I upped the price to a little bit higher than what the price of actual shipping was, and I put it on and I started moving them because when people see free shipping, they're like, it's it's that it's that set amount. It it makes them comfortable. And so rather than like having to worry what shipping's going to be, they just pick the free shipping over the, the, the one where it's paid, even though it's it would arguably be less really money. interesting if you could, if you could list three identical products on a website, Amazon wouldn't let you do it. And I don't know if Etsy would and eBay definitely won't. But if you use different pictures, but it was the same product, okay. could you do it that way? Well, because what I want to get at is, let's say you have three items. You do one where your last example where you you add in a little bit of the cost of shipping and the overall price, and it's free shipping. Mm-hmm. Then you do one where it's a half and half, mm-hmm. okay? You cost and then whatever it costs to ship you. And then you do another one where it's the opposite. The cost of the product is like a dollar, but shipping is like 11 right? So it's just like, whoo, it's flipped all the way up, all the way around. Which one of those three would you sell more of? You know, that's what uh, uh, like Wish does a lot of the time. Or, yeah. or, or yeah. eBay does it a lot too, where you're like, you can get this item for $1, but you're paying $39 in shipping. T- is it Timu? Temu? That's the new one. That, yeah. Where did that come from? Because it's I've all over. I've heard of it. Watch YouTube for like T-E- any T-E-M-U. amount of time. T-E-M-U. Shop okay. like a billionaire. Yes. It is... What a weird so it, it, ad campaign. Shop like a billionaire. Have you, have you heard the jingle where you. they sing that? It's even worse. When they say that again? They sing that. Shop like a... Uh, I'll, I'll find the ad at some point, but it's like this like woman who's dancing and on her phone, and she's like buying clothes. And it's like, shop like a billionaire. And it's, <laughs> it's just like that. And you're where, like, What ethnicity would you say the, 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 that uh, ad was made in? Oh, it's it's a it's a one hundred percent Chinese company. I mean, it's it's oh. it's Wish. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, I, yeah. It's, I didn't know if like if it was like voiced over to be more no, 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 of no, a no. Western it, accent. It, or... It's it's an American voice actor. Oh, okay. So or actress. Um, it's it's a it's a lady, but like it's it's it is very awful to watch. But it is whoever it is wants to launch this uh, thing really bad, and so they're they're spending a lot of money on AdSense right now. If you watch any amount of YouTube, like it'll, you'll see two or three of of those ads. And I was, yeah, I was talking to my wife. I'm like, "Where did this come from?" And I'm tired well, of. Well, they watching bought a it. Super Bowl ad. They did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that they. Man, I missed that one. The T E M U Temu bought a Super Bowl ad. Maybe I'm wrong, but so I wanted to uh, something I wanted to add before. So this might kick us back a ways, but that's fine. You you were talking about. I'm just kidding. You were talking about, well, hang on, is that, you know, it's it's making a $35 sale taking you away from. Mm, Yeah. So one of the things that I teach is how we are, in our day and age, we are very much a culture of consumption. Uh, We love to just sit down and let someone else entertain us. We, we say, Hey, you know, we put in the, the Netflix, the TikTok IV, and we slowly let ourselves kind of continue. And, uh, but we're in this age where there's so much we could be learning, right? TikTok university and people who are listening to this podcast, hopefully you're learning things that are getting out of it. Um, but 
changing it so that your culture is not one of consumption, but one of creation. And you start finding and doing hobbies that are generating some level of whether it's income or uh, uh, advancing your own education, right? You're saying, hey, designing that die was really fun. Mm -hmm. And it, you could consider it that it was work, but it was also kind of a hobby because you enjoyed designing and you did that and it was fun. And so therefore that 40 hours that you spent on it was considered essentially educational. But in the end, you've developed a new skill that is marketable. Mm -hmm. um, I think of that when we play with things like chat GPT or yeah. mid journey, right? When yeah. we go in there and, and that becomes something where you're, you're playing with it. You're getting better at it. You're learning how to speak AI and, uh, and now you're generating a new skill. Um, you know, me building the, hey, the, the bed. Can you drop your mic just a little bit? You're breathing into it again. I'm just breathing out of my nose. And yeah. So you want to put it a little bit lower. Sorry. I'm, I've, I've completely derailed you. Yeah. I don't even remember what I was talking about. You're talking so about like, using your uh, hobby as an education. Yeah, it's like totally gone. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, playing with so, the journey. So this, I just this, this concept, this idea of if you have free time and you have a little shop in your garage, why don't you go build a, a bookcase and and you know work with your hands? If you instead of sitting down and just throwing on another episode of the the show of the month, uh -huh. um, you know, if you've got some extra time. Uh, you know, learn, read, watch, watch something that teaches you something, build something. Because now all of a sudden what you're training yourself to do is instead of, oh, I'm going to sit and veg, it's a, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to find something that I enjoy that is relaxing, but that has another, another side to it, which is either educational or, or business advancing. And it allows you to, uh, to have that have that ability. And I've been mm -hmm. told that that's kind of a, oh, what did she call it? Uh, it's a very, um, I don't know, privileged way of looking at it. Like, well, some people are so tired at the end of the day that that's the only thing that they can do to disconnect. And although I, yes, I can agree to that to some point, but I feel like everyone can find a hobby that advances you mentally and personally and drop hobbies that are just consumption-based hobbies. Yeah, just just you use up time. That's 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 a very interesting concept. I'm trying to think because that that's one thing that we try to push on our my kids is that because um, they they love watching. <laughs> there's this YouTube channel called A for Adley. It's this family down in Utah that that uh, they just they vlog. He owns a, a, a skatewear clothing line and then he does this vlog with his kids and my girls love it um but we want them to get out and we want them to make and create and it's it's hard to get because it's it's easier to just sit there and veg it is and then also as, as a parent if you want to go work on something knowing that your kids are in front of a TV is a lot easier than sending them outside Amen. where they they could be getting into <laughs> to trouble and so it's like, do you want to actively teach them that creation and doing is better than, than vegging or, and then is that something that needs to be taught at a young age or can you develop that skill later is, is basically where I was going with this. Do you, is this something that's easier ingrained as a child or picked up as an adult? Nature versus nurture. <laughs> I I would say that no, you can always. I mean, someone can always change it. Maybe uh -huh. it is. You know, grow you grow up and. Um, but I know people who were very very creative as kids, and as soon as they got out of, you know, the thumb of mom and dad, they were like, "Well, great, now I can just kind of do this all of the time," versus uh, people who were, you know, got really sedentary and then said, you know what? No, I'm going to go ahead and, and tackle the world. Mm -hmm. And then on their free time, they were flipping houses. Right. And that's just, that's what they started spending their free, their free time doing is they would come home at the end of the day, they'd grab a couple of their kids. They'd go out to a house and start laying floor. Um, <clears throat> I, I think it's very much a teachable, but obviously anything you start early, mm -hmm. it's, it's it easier. easier. 
That's that's interesting to me. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> but anytime that you can, anytime that you can, uh, I'll say mix business with pleasure. Um, I have some very, very... Is that healthy, though? Yes. Oh, 100%. You you think that you should monetize your hobbies, that everything should be part of the grind, or do you think you should have something that's just yours? <laughs> oh. I like that little twist. Yeah. That, I think that, I, that changed That it. took me from like 180%. Now it's coming down because because I I have or I'm I'm trying to give myself hobbies because I I love to create and I I like video editing I like I I love doing this podcast I love making the stuff I do but I feel that I need to give myself a hobby that is just fun that is it's not trying to make me money so I have that disconnect. Because I, I don't have, when I was working 9 to 5, you punch out, you go home, and then you have home life. I now work, I would arguably, most of the time at home. I come here and work a little bit. But um, I don't have that, that disconnect where I'm, no, I'm not worried about money. And so I'm, I'm trying to develop hobbies to, uh, to, to create that break where I have that rest where I don't have to think about it. Okay, I th- then I'm gonna I'm gonna backstep because I understand what you're saying now. Um, I don't think that everything that you should be doing should be a monetizing. Mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily saying it's monetizing. You can have your own hobbies as long as those as long as that the, the the time that you're spending on those advances you as a creature, advances you as a person. Interesting. So, for example, um, I think a good way to kind of look at this, in my opinion, is uh, fishing can be very relaxing. Uh Uh-huh. Tying flies is something that you can learn that I feel like makes it now you're learning something above and beyond just going out and fishing. Um, So that you can take something... You know, I, I can listen to music uh-huh. or I can learn to play music. Now, will I ever monetize my music? At the moment, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> Anthony's like, no, you? No. <laughs> but yeah. it's it's that, Are can you choose and are you willing to choose hobbies that are personally advancing versus hobbies and free time? I wouldn't even call them hobbies. We'll call them free, free time, time activities. Yeah that are not self-advancing. That when you finish uh, a show or you finish something and you go, I don't remember what I what I did during that time versus mm-hmm. I now know how to tie a killer fly. And, you know, I was able to do that in a corner of my bedroom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You'll never sell flies, but you've developed a new skill that you previously did not have and then that skill can because like like that that that's, it translates that's my business model in in a nutshell is that i i'm constantly learning and, and perfecting skills and then i'm finding ways to use those skills in other avenues so picked up 3d printing learned how to do the dice taught myself with a laser grave now we're doing laser cut wood art and it's just because like i i enjoy learning new things um and and I I love that, but I'm I am now trying to find a way to take a step back, and instead of trying to learn things just so that I can sell them and make money, learn things for me or take this time where I can I can stop, essentially worrying about the money or how to make money and and do it because I don't know you could argue that with your time is what's your time worth is that by creating scarcity you create value. Um, because if all of your time is being spent making money, then if everything's important, then nothing, nothing, nothing is. Nothing yeah. Is. So you have to you have to have these veg mm-hmm. times where you turn off your brain and you stop learning to uh, trying to make money, so that you can you can balance yourself, you can center yourself. Mm. So when I, I was, I'm going to add one more piece, and I, we've been talking a lot, and Anthony's been pensive, um, I've, been, I've been or pensive. Uh, but the last, no, you're good. 
the last thing that I wanted to, to bring, so I taught, when I was saying you have your own pieces, like for example, I first built a bookcase, okay? Uh-huh. Then I built a dresser. Did I sell those? No, I didn't. Mm-hmm. I built them for my family. Well, then as I built all of those, now I'm building twin beds. Mm -hmm. Why am I building twin beds? Well, those are for a monetary item. So if I had not started with these smaller things that were just for me and my family, then I wouldn't have grown to the point that now I'm able to build something that I'm enjoying Mm -hmm. and using it for some else. Same thing with the cabin that I built, Um, my A-frame cabin. It started with just me and my son saying, this would be a fun project. We picked up 150 bucks in wood, grabbed a whole bunch of leftovers that we had sitting around, and we built this cabin. Well, now the cabin is nice enough and good enough to go out to the campground. It's sitting on the back of a double axle trailer, and it is now going to be for people to stay in it on the river for $65, $75 a night, Mm -hmm. Uh, which is, in my opinion, a great way of, I started as a personal, right? It It was only something I wanted to keep to myself, but then eventually... It went grew to a point where I could monetize it. Mm-hmm. Um, theater is another thing. I I volunteer for a lot of community theaters. Well, then I figured out that I could make money as an MC. So now I'm pivoting that and adding that to my arsenal, my repertoire, whatever you want to call it, of of things that I can do. Interesting. And so I started as a volunteer doing something I love. Found an avenue where there was a need people that needed mics to be run. I mean, tomorrow I'm running a, a bridal fair. Yeah. They needed that. I'm getting paid for that. And, you know, am I still loving it? Yes, I absolutely am. But if I ever wanted to step back from the money-making aspect of it, I still have that hobby, that free time activity that I that I love to do. Interesting. So find hobbies that perfect yourself so that, they one day could be monetized, but don't necessarily learn hobbies to monetize. Is that what you're kind of... Yeah, that's... I think you're spot on with summarizing kind of my my feelings on it. Because, yeah, I I, I do feel that it it can turn unhealthy if all you're doing is is like... So let's let's say you love playing video games and you're like, okay, I'm I'm gonna start streaming everything because I want to become a Twitch streamer. And then all of a sudden, like, you lose that love of, of gaming because... Now it's become the grind for you and you don't like this. And then you can, a lot of people, I, I think a, a struggle in this day of age is, is the grind of trying to turn every hobby into a way to make money. And pretty soon you start to hate all your hobbies because they're, they're not hobbies anymore. They're failed business ventures. I've heard that from influencers. I've heard that from... Uh, the business ventures I did with Brian Lemon, where he mm. started with things and he chased after things that he loved and he burned out the things that he loved. Yeah. And so now he's doing something that is tedious, that pays the bills, but he's happy because he can go home at the end of the day, turn it off and do what he loves without having to worry about it, making money. What do you got for us, Anthony? Anything? No, uh, really not. Okay. Um, I came up with a new product just to think it, as you guys heard talking. That's I have funny. a new idea to do something. <laughs> I love I, it. I, yeah, so you turned this podcast into a monetizable hobby so you can write down business ideas. No, but I'm... Uh, you can't say it because someone else will take it. Yeah, for sure. No, I'll <laughs> tell you guys after. Secret audience doesn't get... No. <laughs> um, I'll add it in the description when you make it live. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, but I thought about what if you... Yeah, you couldn't do this all the time because, like you were said, you would get burned out with it. But as I was just going through my hobbies, so one, I love to golf. Um, I love to golf, and I do. Uh, I I enjoy. Um, and you're good at it too. I'm decent. I'm a, I uh, there's room for improvement. What's your handicap? Oh, let's see. If my dad's listening, it's <laughs> a certain number. If he's not listening, it's uh. Hmm. So, <laughs> you don't get to know, Dad. Um, you got to get off the treadmill and watch us on YouTube to know that number. No, my dad, <laughs> man, I'm going to, this is a side tangent. I've beaten him a few times. Uh huh. And that's even maybe generous. I could maybe on, on all my hands count how many times I've beat him. Um, About as much as your handicap. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but. 
Anytime that I've like started to beat him and then I started like throwing down some smack, he turns into freaking Kobe Bryant. Just like Michael Jordan just tunes me out, pushes down the gas, and then just buries me. And then my destructive inner thought comes and then I just self destruct and then I lose by a lot. So I'll never beat my dad. <laughs> so I know it's the great thing he's supposed to get. He's getting older. I'm getting older. He's supposed to get worse. And he's not, but that's that's my dad. So what you're saying is is that he'll let you win until you start talking smack, and then he will not well, let you win anymore. And well, and then it's not even just not let me win. He just he, like I said, he buries me. <laughs> it's like just pushes the gas and just says, "Don't let up until it hurts." Um, <laughs> but um, so I was thinking about that. I was thinking about golf, and I was like, I I. I don't know of a way that I can monetize my golf, mm-hmm. right? I'm not, I'm not, a, not anywhere close to being a, a tour professional. Mm-hmm. Although there is a joke I always say, like when I can't putt, I'm always like, "Ugh, this is the reason I'm not a professional golfer. Uh-huh. It's because I'm putting." And my dad's like, "Oh yeah, that's the reason." <laughs> <laughs> but I would, I'm gonna just throw in you, your personal development with golf. That is a personal development. That is a physical. It is a mental, it is, you are training, like, there are things you are doing that advance you as an individual. Oh, absolutely. No, yeah, I I don't discredit that at all. What I am wondering about is, there are aspects of my hobbies that I think about monetizing. So I think Mm -hmm. about, like, okay, I'm golfing, I have this this particular set of tees that I like. They're inexpensive, I usually buy, like, the same kind. Um, what if I developed a tea or, you know, or like, uh, mm-hmm. I, there's a new, th- uh, new type of, uh, club scrubber that includes like the, the water, or the solution. And it comes with, it's like a little score body. <laughs> you clean your grooves out like, like a dishwasher thing. 3D printing golf tees. Oh, never have to buy them again. <laughs> you would have to replace your clubs more often than you would your tees. Um, but anyway, and I, I and so what I was thinking about while you two were ugh, dragging on um, was this this aspect of like I wonder if that's like I re- really not really asking for permission, but really wondering like I wonder if that's okay. I wonder if that's okay to like monetize or think about monetizing these things. If nothing comes of it, if it doesn't, if there's no fruition that comes from it, or if it's healthy because it just gets the mind juices flowing, mm-hmm. um, which I lean more towards that. I, I lean more towards, ah, it's, it's really a bad thing if you that. think. Um, but then I also wonder, like, what if you had that mentality of, like, I'm not going to monetize my whole hobby, but I am going to try to make this a tax write-off. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, that was that was my thought process while you two were no, cackling. That's that's not a bad outlook, <laughs> finding ways to make it a tax write-off. Well, well, that's, that's what I mean by business and pleasure, yeah. I mean, we when we went on a trip down to go visit uh, down in Mexico, mm-hmm. and we visit our manufacturers, but we also got to go eat delicious food while in Mexico, and it was completely worth it and we own a sandal company guess where sandals in the middle of winter you shouldn't take pictures of them in alaska yes here in montana so i have to go places where you're taking those those photographs we we should have a meeting uh on the golf course and then we can write off our our golf memberships we should have a podcast on the golf course that's just an audio version we put in headsets and we just chat the whole way That'd be pretty fun. I have that podcast, that little Zoom, that little Zoom podcast deal I borrowed from Tyler Martin, mm-hmm. and it's got I think it's got four channels on it. So if we could get, I mean, you have to get the little headset things that plug into the XLRs, but you just put that on the cart, the little like receiver on the cart, and we just meander while around we're, and while we're golfing. Just it would it. I would have to get a couple of uh, sessions under my belt, otherwise it's gonna be me breathing into the microphone of. <laughs> 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 No, we'll get a golf cart. It'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, still, I, I went. Well, I was in. I was in Arizona just recently, and I, I found myself in a PGA Superstore. Uh huh. Oh, I could spend a lot of money in that store. I contemplated a putter. I contemplated some golf balls that were. Uh, so traditionally, when you buy a set of golf balls, it's one through four. Mm-hmm. Um, in a set of twelve, these ones were. Uh, higher numbers, so like 44, 66, 
Shrek's for nine. Um, all yeah, all of like these these crazy numbers. I was like, man, that'd be sweet. I always have loved the forty four is like one of my favorite numbers and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, thought about that and anyway, just a bunch of stuff in that store. Anyway, I was putting and I was putting for quite a while, and <laughs> I realized when I got done, I was like, oh, my freaking back is sore. <laughs> I was in a store that was air conditioned. I was wearing sandals and shorts <laughs> in a, uh, I wasn't even walking. And I was just like, eh. oh, my, my back. Oh. I just would like the, I, I thought you were going to say you got winded. No, <laughs> thankfully, no. Uh, that, oh, I don't know if I would have shared that even if that was happening. <laughs> The golf club's too heavy. See, this is why you're not in. This is why you're not a professional. This is why I'm not a professional. <laughs> this reason right the here. The putting. But no, I, I, I recently just, uh, I recently, I'm now in my 41st year um, of of living, as my dad would say, mm-hmm. keeping the dad theme alive. And so it was funny. The day after my 40th birthday, I went to tie my shoes, and my back kind of went kink, and I was like, oh, <laughs> so. son of a gun. <laughs> but. Anyway, I'm old. Well, we're down to the end here. Yeah, we're so we're gonna do final thoughts right now. So this has been a, a, an interesting episode because it it's been time, money themed, but we've kind of gone everywhere with it. Yeah, but I wouldn't I wouldn't trade this episode for anything. It was I would like AI to listen to our podcasts and then like write a book about it and see what what even coherent thoughts it would have. I think <laughs> Here's be- all of our transcripts. Turn this into a book. Yeah. <sighs> Who wants to do chat GPT four? <laughs> oh, AI, AI says things like, "Did you hear?" And Thomas did an ADHD. Anthony got old. <laughs> we are. <laughs> it's like goes through. <laughs> did you hear that the the Brian's writers on guild? Opiates. Yeah, just a little bit. Yes. Uh, they're how on they're, strike. They're yeah. on strike. But part of the negotiations is you uh, studios can't, can't use, use AI. AI to write <laughs> scripts. <laughs> See, I think the biggest issue, in my opinion, with that is. It will put the studios at a disadvantage because now studios without writers guilds or private and, and you know internet groups that are producing stuff, they will start. They'll take it and run. So I say, great, let them let them fight over that as a writers guild. When I, you're shunning innovation, what you're doing is those who say they are the most progressive are not allowed or not wanting to embrace something. That yeah. is incredibly progressive. Well, and yeah, I mean, just even just even from the fact of overhead, you have a team of writers that you're paying. Like, uh, so all of the Tonight shows, all of the Tonight shows, yep. and SNL, they've all urge halted. Uh, they're not. They're in rerun season now, right? Which was it was coming up anyway. But um, I guess the Tonight Show they don't do reruns, but they're they're done. They're not writing right now. That's insane to me because, like, the thing is that, like, it, the AI just needs to progress a little bit f- further, and then you could just upload the transcripts of every episode ever written, and then just type in, like, "Hey, we need a skit with." I would argue they've already done that. There's probably some writer. I would that argue has. the writers have done that, and that's where they're doing it. And so, the, I would argue they're arguing it because they've done it. The writers have done it. They are profiting off of it. They don't want to get cut out. They they're the middleman in this in this transaction. So the the writers guild can use AI, but the studio can't. Right. Oh, dude, that's I always find it interesting that you have a studio and they say these writers that are part of this guild and must just be part of the contract because I, I, I need to look into it. I really do, because I don't under, even understand well, this. Well, this, this is, at least in my adulthood, mm-hmm. this is the second, second time, time that this happened. I think it was 15 years ago. And do you know I what led right. to this strike? Um, Michael Che. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I was thinking of something witty to say, because I was like, I have no idea, but I could throw streaming, something out there. Uh, streaming, because, so royalties and streaming. So in the contracts, it says that they, they get paid out any time an episode airs, but... Because streaming isn't considered aired, writers aren't being paid royalties off of every time an episode is streamed. And so in order... Whoa. Wait, really? It, it's it's not explicitly written. But can you think... I mean, because like how many... Because they measure the minutes watched of something in the billions now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so can you imagine like if a writer... The writers would be cashing it in, even if it was... 
But see, that's what they, that's what they used to do. You write one good show, and then you get royalty checks for the rest of your life. And that, and well, the other thing is, is that studios now will just cut out backlogs. They'll just start stop streaming things and shelf it. And so writers are feeling that they're getting their their shares taken away by by hmm. arguments in in the streaming se- sections of their contracts. Let's mm. finish this up. All right. Uh, last words. Any, any, any last words? <laughs> None. I think I, I hashed it out. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to recap. Become a creature of creation and your free time activities. Find something that develops you, that you can use as a creative space that may not monetize what you're exactly doing, but that will spur more creative ideas so that when you continue to, when you go back to work, you have new ideas. So maybe you won't be a golf coach, but you're going to be out in a space where creativity works well when you walk away from the mundane. Mm -hmm. And so when you're out walking and doing golfing, that's where your ideas could come. So get out of that mundane, find a a free time activity. Or when you're sitting at a podcast. Yeah, sitting here Um, doing something that's different than than your your typical setup. Oh my gosh. That's it. My my recap is uh, one uh, what we were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, find ways to balance the the tedious with the with with pleasure when it comes to like working. Uh, don't be afraid to chase sexy, but at the same time, like make sure your bills are paid. Um, <laughs> two is oh, missing my train of thought. Um, find ways. Build value in your time by creating creating scarcity. Because if you think you have all the time in the world, then you can I don't know push off a project until midnight and then be working until six in the morning because then you'd be shipped by eight the next day. So like I don't know, take that time for yourself so that the time that you're working is worth more. Um, and yeah, that's that's about it. So. He's on a phone call. I'll wrap that up. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, podcast is available on YouTube. I don't think I'm going to upload to Rumble anymore because we're getting like one view. So Rumble's Rumble. going away. Bye, Rumble. Uh, audio version's available essentially anywhere audio podcasts are available. Episodes are out Wednesday. If you like what you're seeing, like, comment, subscribe, so that way people can uh, know about us. And uh, thank I'll you so much for watching. Us. Take care, folks. Ha, ha, ha.